In this video, we are going to implement the Prime Faces Autocomplete widget onto our main page of our application. Now, Autocomplete, very nice. If I know a lot of people in this class have taken my Android class, and the theme there is really the design principles of mobile. It's really a, a significant change from previous design principles because it's all about simplifying. Simplify my life. This is one of the three core principles of Android design. We have amaze me or make me amazing, enchant me, and simplify my life. Keep it brief. Use short phrases and simple words. Don't go into a very elaborate explanation. Pictures are faster than words. Decide for me, but let me have the final say. This is very much what an autocomplete text is. Decide for me, but let me have the final say. So I can start typing red bud. And it's, as I type, as I started to type red, you see it shows me everything that has the word red in it. Red B, that limits it a bit more. Red B U D, red bud. Okay, I can maybe say eastern red bud. And then it's going to show me only the two eastern red buds. But decide for me, so you see it's helping us decide, but let me have the final say. So I can, I can maybe say pink eastern red bud, something like that. You see, I can continue to type uh, and still hit search. It won't give me any results, but I can type and hit search, and it will let me continue to type even if my entry is not in the autocomplete. Now, uh, I hit search, and you see it's quick for me to start typing something like red bud, and now we get to the uh, search results here. So that's what we want to do. Now, to be honest with you, this Plant Places website is not written in Java. It's Perl, CSS, JavaScript, and this is a, uh, this is a, a client-side component that I've used. I did have to do a little work behind the scenes to get this to work. It's quite a bit easier if we are using Prime Faces and JSF because the Prime Faces library gives us a tag and a series of tags where all we have to do is write a little Java class that provides it with data. See, so see, simple, I can start typing foo. Okay, it's going to give me an autocomplete. Minimum length three, F, O, nothing. O again, now we start to get results. Delay, foo, give it a second, and then it comes up with some results. Max results five, foo. Okay, you see, max results five. So, uh, for selection, in this case, we have to pick something from the list. Drop down, all kinds of good options here. So, um, what we'll do then is we'll take a look at the uh, autocomplete HTML, and we're going to see if I scroll to the left, we have P autocomplete, then an ID, then uh, we'll look at this one up here, then a value. That means when I submit, where's this going to go? Uh, all of this is very similar to our current H input text element we have on that front screen. Where it differs is this complete method here. The complete method, autocomplete view dot complete text. This is some kind of method that was written to return values that will fill the autocomplete. Let's take a look at what this complete text method looks like. And the JSF or the Prime Faces people were kind enough to give us the source for the autocomplete view class that has this complete text method. So I click on autocomplete view. I look at complete text and we see it returns a list and accepts a query. Now in this list, it does not have to be a string. And as a matter of fact, I'll tell you now, if you're doing an autocomplete text and you're returning a list of strings, you're not doing it in a very object-oriented way. You should really be returning objects there. We'll see what I mean in just a moment. For the complete text, it is accepting a string because that's what the user is typing. And that's okay, because users can only type strings. They can't type objects we have to take the input that the user types and make an object out of it. So this string is okay, but over here, just know it has to be a list. The generic identifier does not have to be string. It can be honestly any object, and it's better if it is an object. So let's make it work. So I'm gonna to go to our Plant Places application, and I'm gonna to go to index.html, And we see that we currently have, whoops, okay, there we go. We see that we currently have P input text. Let's change this to uh, P autocomplete. Uh, 
Okay, and we'll keep this one fairly simple for the time being. So P autocomplete, and then we had something called complete method. Okay, and for this, we're, let me, uh, yeah, let me control M for a moment. For the complete method, we're going to use that same hash curly syntax we've seen earlier. So double quote, hash curly, and then close curly. And then between here, we need a managed bean and a method to invoke to give us the autocomplete. So control M, and uh, let's see what we have under our Java resources. Okay, source, I have a DTO, and the DTO is plant. Okay, that's good. And then I have a managed bean called search plants. I should probably make a different managed bean, but let's go ahead just for this demo. Let's use search plants. Okay, search plants. As long as search plants uh, has the uh, correct annotations. So let's see, named, manage, bean, scope, session. That's all good. As long as it has the correct annotations, we can use it in our index HTML. So uh, search plants and then a period, and then I'm going to make a new method called complete plant. Or let's say complete plants. Okay. Uh, note the capitalization. Let's keep that consistent. So search plants dot complete plants. Okay. I'm going to control C on this method name complete plants and I'm going to go to search plants uh, actually let me save before I forget let me save that index before I forget now I'm going to go back to search plants and I'm going to make that method that we saw earlier let me control M so we can see this in high def remember it has to return a list of something so I'm going to say public list but remember, returning a list of strings is not very object-oriented. We want an object. Well, what kind of object would be good to return? Honestly, a plant object, because that's what the user is searching for. So public list plant, and then I'll paste the method name, and then string query. Now, that string query is what the user is typing in. So really, we should use that query to filter the list that's getting returned. We will eventually do that in a future video, but in this video, I just want to show you how to put the autocomplete on the on the uh, JSF. Okay, go ahead and terminate. Okay. So uh, complete plants. What I'm going to do is I said I'm going to return a list of plants. So first of all, uh, we need to take care of our red lines. We see list is underlined. It can't find it, so Control shift o and Eclipse will automatically organize imports. Grab the interface in this case, java.util.list. Okay, array list, plant, all plants equals new array list, plant. Open and close paren, terminate with a semicolon. Control shift o again to take care of the import for the array list. At the bottom of this method, return all plants. Okay, now create plants and add them to the collection. Okay, plant redbud equals new plant. Redbud dot set. What setter method do we have? Well, the only one we have is name. I will say eastern redbud. Okay. And then we'll say uh, all plants dot add red button. There we go. Good. Okay, let's do a couple more. Plant paw paw equals new plant paw paw dot set name uh, paw paw. Okay. All plants dot add and then paw paw. Okay. Oop, not add all we want to add. Okay, one more. Plant. Let's make this one nasturtium. Equals new plant. Nasturtium. Dot set name, nasturtium. Yes, 
allplants.add nasturtium. Now you might wonder why did I set the name and why why did I set the name to nasturtium when the variable name was also nasturtium? And same for pawpaw and redbud. Well, the variable name is just our, our parking space. It's just our address. Uh, the set name is what we want the user to actually see. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to control M. And I think we have enough now. We, we're going to redeploy to stop republish. So we'll go ahead and start uh, in debug mode, which will typically force it to publish. Give it a few moments here to start. And with it started, now we'll go back to our browser. Just a moment. There we go. And I'll refresh the page, and you'll see there's not a whole lot of difference to the user initially because they both look like text fields. It's just the autocomplete gives us that autocomplete ability. So we go back and we refresh. Give it just a moment. Okay. And now I'm going to start typing pawpaw. Okay. Well, look what came up. com.plantplaces.dto.plant, blah, 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 something that looks interesting. So technically the autocomplete worked, but it's a, kind of like a logic error. It didn't give us what we want. And why is that? Well, the autocomplete, when it gets an object that's not a string, it calls a method on that object that it knows will return a string. Now, what method can it call if it doesn't know what object it's received? Well, we have to remember how inheritance works in Java. We remember that you inherit methods unless you override them. Uh, so I'm going to say java.lang.capital O object. We also have to remember this guy. This is the grand ancestor of all classes in Java. So if there's a method defined here that's not private, that means that every class in Java has that method. So if we take a look at this guy, not a whole lot of methods fall in that classification, but some do. And one of the most important is this one here called toString, which returns a string. And that returns a string representation of the object. That fulfills what I mentioned earlier, which is uh, if we have a, if we, if the autocomplete needs to return a string and it gets a list of objects, it's going to call the one method on that object that it knows will return a string. So what it's calling is it's calling to string. The trick is because that's defined at a very general level, the to string, the generic uh, to string representation is the fully qualified class name of the object, an at symbol, and then a hex representation of the hash code. What's the hash code? Hash code? Well, guess what? That's another method that's available on this thing called capital O object. And for a string, it's some interesting math that involves a prime number 31 that basically can take a string and give it a nearly unique number that it computes from that string itself. But not a whole lot of good information for us. So the bottom line is, how do we fix it? We fix it very easily. We go back to our plant DTO. And what we're going to do is we're going to override that two string method. So I'm going to go here, uh, this area within the class plant itself, but not within a method. I'm going to type TOS, hold control and hit space, which in Eclipse, that means, hey, I'm writing a method name. Can you help me out and auto complete it for me? And it suggests to us two string. I hit enter, and there we go. Now instead of returning super.toString, I'm going to have a return name. Name is the only attribute we have right now, and it is a string. So I have a return name, and we save. I'll go ahead and tell it to restart the application. We'll give it a moment, and we'll see if we get better results. And with the server now started, I return back to our page. Just a moment. Refresh. And let's take a look at what we get when we start typing. You see now it's actually auto-completing. Now it's not filtering because filtering is up to us. And at this point, I haven't taken advantage of that filter. But you do see now it gives us 
better information, not, not the fully qualified class name and then the hex code. It actually gives us some better information because we have overridden that two string variable. So lesson here is when you're dealing with an autocomplete, always return an object, not a string, but override the two string method of that object to get a string representation of that object. Now a footnote here is I mentioned that we're not doing anything with this string query, which is what the user has already uh, has been typing in. It would be fairly easy to filter this out by what the user is typing in, but this is just a stub. Obviously, we don't want to hard code in everything that every possible plant, because in plant places, there are over 3,000 plants. So we don't want to have to go in and change code every single time we add a new plant. We want this to come from the database. Now the query, that, that little substring that the user has entered, we could filter that in memory and that would be a good thing to do in the business logic or you might call it a Java Bean layer or a service layer, but that business logic layer. And that's going to be our conversation for next week. So I'm going to hold this where it is and that will give us a nice start next week when we start to consider what really belongs in the view layer because this probably isn't a good example of something that should be in the view layer in this UI package. What belongs in the business logic layer and what belongs in the service layer. So we'll pick up this conversation then. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.